We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Do you guys kind of want to give us a, ba- a brief history of GoBuilda? And then how did you guys get started in this fantastic company? Uh, I'll let Jason kind of jump into that maybe a little bit. Or... Well, I think you almost have to roll it back uh, a little bit further than GoBuilda to understand like the, the history of GoBuilda. So we, sorry, <laughs> I was being waved off camera to to stop. Are we technical okay. problems? Are we? Can you hear us? Yes, we can uh, hear you. Okay, all right. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, anyways, um, so it really starts with uh, Robot Zone, which Brian started in college. Um, that was around 1994, um, and so you know you can jump in on that part of it because that was long before I was part of the company. But uh, he was building robots for companies and, and things, and essentially, uh, e- eventually, he he made uh, ServoCity.com, which was the uh, retail wing of Robot Zone. So Robot Zone is like the parent company, um, but eventually he opened up ServoCity.com and started uh, catering to a variety of different markets. It's like RC and uh, you know a lot of like DIYers and things like that. Um, and but they were still building projects for for companies and eventually decided you know it was time to uh, start making parts that would make their job of building these projects for other companies quicker and easier. So uh, in the world of programming, you've probably heard of the acronym DRY, don't repeat yourself. And uh, the Actibotics build system was born out of uh, that kind of concept in the physical realm. Um, and so so first came Robot Zone, parent company, then came Service City, the e-commerce wing, uh, and then eventually uh, they developed Actibotics. Uh, and this was all before I came on board. And I came on board about three years ago, uh, and we started developing. Uh, so Server City launched in 2001. Uh, we actually recently had an annual meeting. We talked about kind of timeline a little bit, so this is kind of locked and loaded a little bit. But uh, And then we uh, had a Go Build a launch last uh, September. So yeah. the reason we developed Go Build a kind of comes down to uh, the fact that we had uh, international companies, uh, international customers, and uh, customers in certain um, you know, engineering circles that really prefer working with metric. And that's what kind of got the gears turning and made us think, you know, uh, we've had Actibotics for many years now. You know, maybe it's time to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit and make a, a metric version of, of Actibotics. Yeah. So, sorry. I'm really, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been around. I started in a dorm room at Southwestern College. I've always been building robots for, man, since I was a little kid. And, um, you know, back in the days before you guys were probably born, um, you know, building robots down in my basement, cutting them out of wood, RC servos, that type of stuff. So I've been doing it for a long time. I mean, I love, love, love building robots. So, but, um, but yeah, we're doing a lot of projects for companies. And then um, we were building the same thing over and over again. We were doing projects for everything from Apple to Microsoft to Agile Systems to, you know, you name it. Um, and then we were kind of doing a lot of prototype the same stuff. So we're like, you know, we need a building system that's kind of a rector set like a little bit. Um, and so we developed uh, Actibotics. And so, and then obviously out of Actibotics came Go Build a. Uh, we learned a lot of Acti- out of Actibotics. Um, and then obviously from a worldwide product standpoint. So the world is metric mostly. So, <laughs> but sorry, I know we were long winded there probably. But. Yeah. Um- I guess I'll ask, uh, do you guys have a favorite build system? Actobotics versus GoBuilda? Is there a oh, personal preference? <laughs> oh. it's, it's hard not to latch on to your, you know, your new development, the one that you've poured into for the past few years. Um, I'm pretty partial to GoBuilda. Um, I was around for the, the birth of both systems, but uh, there are some things you know, in GoBuilda that's kind of nice. When you're working in Actibotics and somebody throws out something like 764s, you know, if if you could do that in your head <clears throat> and come out with a decimal number, uh, you're you're way faster at math than I am. Um, in the metric system, you know, the the worst you get to is like a quarter mil, uh, a quarter half, one mil shims, and then everything else is kind of based on that eight mil grid system. Um, so you can build both small things and large things. It scales very easily. 
Um, whereas, you know, Actibotic Switch is also great and you can make very large structures, but there are small parts and larger parts that don't mix quite as easily in Actibotics as GoBuilder does. So yes. what are your personal backgrounds and experiences with FIRST, if you guys have those experiences? Um, I don't. I wish FIRST was, was around when I was uh, building robots down in my basement, but unfortunately it wasn't. So, um, but man, I, I mean, I would do it today if I could. Well, I kind of do every day, but, but Jason? I, uh, I remember hearing about FIRST years ago, like after I was too old to actually be in it. And I thought, man, that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. Um, but starting last uh, summer, I actually am mentoring uh, a first Lego League team uh, because my kids are actually now old enough to do that. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't involved in first. Uh, it wasn't around in Kansas when I went through school, but uh, been to a lot of competitions with the guys and seen a lot of cool robots. And uh, we, we talk to customers on the phone every day about, you know, challenges they're facing and trying to select parts and stuff like that. And so we get a, a pretty good dose of it on a daily basis. So with that, with having a very limited first experience, how did uh, Actobotics and um, Go Build a kind of become primary build systems for FTC? What was the creation? Why, why are you, why is that kind of seems like a target market? Well, you know what? Actobotics was not designed for education market whatsoever. I mean, so basically what started was um, online. We started selling a lot of servo blocks and pretty soon um, a lot of teams started calling, asking about servo blocks and then asking about the whole Actobotic system. You know, and so not that we weren't interested in the education market, but it was just, you know, it wasn't designed for that. It was designed for people wanting to build 3D printers and, you know, kind of in tech labs and things like that or in, in, in company for companies. So, um, yeah, it really started with servo blocks. I mean, there was a huge need, as you know, servos are awesome little devices, but they just can't take that side load. And so we started inventing different products for servos and that just latched on and went from there. So, yeah, for sure. So with that, what is all of your favorite go build up parts? I'm sure there's a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I can jump uh, in right quick. Mine's yeah. probably um, some of the new hubs that we've created. The the Sonic Hub. Uh, it's got two pinch bolts. It's balanced. It's clamping, so you don't have any set screws that are going to come loose or mar the shaft or anything like that. Um, there's just kind of a cool design about it when you look at it, like um, you know, being around machining and things like that. Um, it it's a uh, very, I don't know, it's just a beautiful part, I guess. It is. Is that tough to machine? Uh, yeah, there are certainly some challenges making the uh, one mil wide cut, you know, going around kind of in the S shape that it has. But um, overall, we've had, had very good luck with them and uh, they've, they've done well so far. And then we've got the double, double. sonic as well. Sonic, if you yeah. need a little more clamping force or, you know, another advantage to this one is you've got enough thread, you can come in both sides. So if you put want to put a sprocket on each side and kind of traverse down your, your structure channel. or your channel, you, you can certainly do that with one hub. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Um, I guess, yeah, Jason and Brian, what are your favorite products? Ooh, man. Mine are some of the ones that we're developing right now, but I love, you know, I love anything with gears, anything that's moving, I, I love. So everything from like gear trains like that, like bevel gears inside a channel to, you know, worm drives like this with go tube on it like that, stuff like that. But, you know, one thing we're starting to do that is just awesome is we're starting to put brushless motors in a lot of go build a chassis that we're building. And so that is like blowing our minds, the things that we're developing now. So obviously it's not FTC, you know, viable, but it's just wicked cool to build stuff that just goes just crazy fast. So we, yeah, like we have this right here. It's got brushless motors that are testing out some new tracks. And actually, this actually, you know, I'll tell you what. One of my favorite things are these right here that we'll be coming out with are metal tracks. These things are wicked. So metal tracks that you got to be really careful with them because I mean they will they will seriously mess you up. Uh, if you turn it on, but <laughs> but um, but we're building different things that are you know ripping around the back of R and D, just just throwing up dirt rooster tails and grass rooster tails. So that's any part that's kind of dealing with brushless motors and uh, some of our more powerful or stronger parts. That's that's what gets me amped up. So I don't know about Jason, but 
You know, I it's kind of hard to pick. I really like the square beams. Um, you know, that they're incredibly versatile, and everything you build is going to be totally on pattern with those. So you can, uh, you know, if you had a big bucket of square beams, you could build just about anything you wanted. Although it's a smaller scale part in a lot of ways, but um, if you think of it as a kind of super standoff to where uh, you have that surface to to mount parts to in between the two surfaces that you're standing off apart from each other. Um, it's very versatile. Um, and then we have the spin off the, the uh, um, shaft beam. beam, which has uh, radius edges so that can fit through uh, a bearing as well. Uh, but I also get a, a pretty big kick out of uh, worm gears. Uh, I love uh, worm gears and I'm glad that we have it like really rolled into the fold of the go build the system. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.